look, when you like the guy, you tend to give him the benefit of the doubt, okay? The first thing is reacting to his inconsistency with consistency. A lot of the times when you like the guy, the more inconsistent he is with you, the more consistent you become. Unfortunately, when you see a guy acting that way, it's either one or two things. One, no, three things. One, he has a girlfriend and he has to hide his phone and cancel plans on you because his girlfriend randomly changes things up. Two, he doesn't like you. Or three, he likes you and is trying to hide how he likes you or using my strategies. For the most part, it's either going to be one, he doesn't like you and he can't, he doesn't want to tell you because he doesn't want to hurt you. Or two, he has a girlfriend for the most part. Three, it, that she watches my channel or, or channels about how to seduce women is the last one, to be honest with you. Either way, the way you react to his inconsistency is with you being even more inconsistent because it's going to force him to either get the truth out of you by him directly saying what's going on and why you're not being consistent, which then allows you to address it, or him say, thank fucking God, this girl is, is pulling away, let me pull away, which either which tells you, I, at the end of the day, you're going to get an answer because if he if he's act, if he's trying to manipulate you, he'll actually give up his strategies and be and, and be honest with you and say, hey, how you been? Blah, blah, blah. What's going on? And just open up to you. Right. But if he doesn't like you, he'll just leave. You get what I'm saying? So the second one is this. And before anything, um, just to let you know, um, we're having a seminar on on this week in Amsterdam, it's actually for free because I changed it up. It's only going to be one hour. That's why I made it free. If you want to go, just DM me on Instagram. Um, and um, and I'm having a few seminars in Miami, LA, and Cal and um, and Chicago in the in in, at, in the fall. So if you want to see where I'm going to go to your city, click on the description down below where it says seminar, and I'll be able to go there. And I'll and you'll know when I go there. And I deleted the previous video because I didn't like some of the points, so I decided to make it again. The second thing is dating an ex who cheated on you. Ladies and gentlemen, he is not going to cheat. I mean, he is not going to come back. He's like, yeah, tell her. Tell her I'm not going to cheat, says Tyrell in the background. No, but seriously, dating an ex who cheated on you, what the fuck? What are you doing? Do you really expect him to change? Come on, man. S anytime somebody cheats once, they're going to they're gonna do it again. And most likely, that was not the first time they cheated. People never do things just once. And it's in male nature, for the most part, and female nature, to cheat. Okay? So getting back with an ex, no matter what he tells you, it's if you if you if you hope for a healthy relationship and that's what you're asking for, don't take them back. Even though it sounds real, even though he's telling you everything you need to hear, just follow that rule blindly. People never just cheat once. Okay. Now, unfortunately, women are more forgiving about infidelity than than men are. Men. Are, are less forgiving about sexual infidelity because of evol evolutionary reason. The third one, telling a guy how many guys you banged. I don't give a fuck if you banged the whole goddamn football team. Do not tell him that. I don't care if this guy sounds open-minded. I don't care if this guy's levitating, meditating, all that shit. I don't care if, he so if he's, the, he's the most feminist guy in the world. Guys will judge you. He'll say he doesn't judge it, but trust me, he will judge you for it secretly, okay? So do not tell a guy how many guys you banged. If you, if you're, put it this way, if you're, 20, if you're in your 20s, tell him you banged 10 guys. If you're in your 30s, tell him you banged 20 guys. If you're in your 40, tell him you banged 25 guys. The point is, is that do not tell him how much, how many guys you've actually been with. Guys, unfortunately, for evolutionary reasons, they find that unattractive, right? It's, a, it's, the, it's the whole Madonna horror complex where guys actually categorize unconsciously women in two different places. They either categorize you as wifey material or they categorize you as a whore. There's no middle ground with the guys. And unfortunately, most women have their own, have, have their dirty little secrets in the background. And they always, for the most part, lie about the amount of guys they've been with and guys are used to hearing a certain lay count but in reality women and you guys notice have a natural higher lay count than, than normal it's just not socially acceptable to to say how many guys you've actually been with i don't care if it's even your friends ladies never tell people how many guys you've actually banged please don't keep that to yourself take it to the grave because your friends might betray you um the fourth one is paying for the dates look i don't care <laughs> Well, if it's Leonardo DiCaprio or, I, or Father Alex, I completely get it. But outside of that, never pay for a date. I mean, come on. I mean, I mean, you're, 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 I mean, you're going through some stuff if you're paying for, for the date on the guy. If you have to approach a guy and pay for the date because either one, he's not approaching you and this is the only way to get him, or two, because 
he's broke, either way, it's not a good idea. The only time I would suggest that you pay for the date is if you're dating a woman and you're a woman and you ask her out. That's the only time. Or if it's a, if it's a, if it's another, if you're dating another woman, it's okay to split it up. Five, trying to change a man. I am telling you, ladies and gentlemen, look, trying to change a man is a lost cause. You're never gonna change him. If an addict cannot stop being an addict for his own sake, how the hell you think somebody's gonna change for their own sake? Never try to change a guy. People are who they are for the most part. If you meet a guy and he's a cheater or a drug addict, you're not gonna, your pussy's not gonna change him. How good you blow him, it's not. How good you do things to him is not gonna change him, okay? So do not try to change a guy. You're wasting your time. In fact, trying to change a guy actually makes you fall in love with the motherfucker. It makes you end up liking the guy because you're putting effort and you're investing in him. And naturally, you're gonna naturally get attached to the guy. So anytime you meet a guy, he might be perfect. But ask yourself, what are the deal breakers? In your mind, before you meet a guy, ask yourself, what are the things you don't, you don't, you would never accept, no matter how good his dick is? And then ask yourself, what are the things that I'm willing to accept? What are the flaws in the person that I'm willing to accept? You gotta know those things so that when the moment comes and you meet that guy, you're not gonna let the rush of emotion cloud your judgment. Know before you go to the grocery store what you're gonna, what you're gonna buy. Do not buy with an empty, with a, with an empty stomach. Buy and think about your food with a full stomach. Before you meet the guy, before you get needy, before you love him, create those standards so that when you meet him, you're able to disqualify them as soon as possible because the key is, is it's not about finding the right guy, but about eliminating, eliminating the wrong guys as soon as possible so that you can make space for the right guys. The, the sixth one, dating a young, and so also with the fifth one, if a guy doesn't want to have a kid, don't wait. If, it's a guy, if a guy's not ready for a relationship, don't wait. Sometimes you met them at the wrong time. Sometimes that same guy, you could have met him five years later and he's ready, but you're not gonna wait five years because within, within, within those five years, you could have met a guy. And also if you wait five years, that guy's not gonna respect you. And also after two or three months, the, the guy really knows what he wants with you. In fact, after two or three months, if he's in a place in life where he doesn't want a relationship and he meets you and you, and you guys have natural chemistry, not, not that egoic type of thing or not that sexual charge chemistry, but natural, to the like to the like natural chemistry when you meet somebody and you're friends with them no matter their age or looks if you have that natural chemistry that could change your mind but most of the time it's just it's rare to find somebody like that six dating younger guys look this is not this is look dating younger guys for a relationship to be more specific if you just if you're just dating a younger guy to bang him that's fine right you could you could bang your personal trainer but if you're dating a guy for a relationship, what are you doing? I mean, like, I know what you're doing, I get it. But it's just not gonna work out. I'm just gonna be plain and simple. It's not gonna work out, okay? I'm trying to date, date it because those guys don't see you as relationship. They don't want a relationship with an older woman. That's just the truth. You got, it sounds mean, but most guys want a relationship with a younger woman, okay? I mean, I mean, I mean, it, it, being one to one in a relationship nowadays is the equivalent to wanting to marry a woman back then, okay? Why? Because the decisions that guys make to be in a relationship with a woman is, a, is the same logical decision making when it came to finding somebody to have a kid with. In other words, you look for signs of youth, for signs of, of especially signs of youth, some woman younger than you. You look for signs of health. And, I'm, and not unfortunately, but it is what it is. Younger women are the ones that are most viable for it. So when you're younger, you're obviously going to have more choice. But if you're in the 50s, it's better to just date. Or 50s, 60s, it doesn't matter. The point is, at, as, like, at a certain point, it's just better to date guys who are older than you. you know? Because just the younger guys are not going to have the same value systems as you, as you do. And, if, and sometimes, a lot of times, women date, and people in general, date younger people because of youth envy. They're trying to relive their youth through dating somebody who's younger than them or even having sex with them. It's actually a way of like, it's like vampiring their youth by being with them in a weird way. Um, seven, forgiven too much. Look, I know he's a nice guy. I know he sounds like he's really sorry. If a guy, if a guy hits you, abuses you, cheats on you, some people you just cannot forgive, you just gotta move on. When I say forgive, I mean this, it's a tendency to take people back, essentially. It's a tendency that, to believe that, that if a guy says, I'm not gonna smack you again, you believe in that. Stop being so forgiven, especially nice girls. And if you're a nice girl, by the way, we have a course called Nice Girl that is only available to purchase either 
in in July or in or November. If you purchase it in July, you're gonna have access to it all, you know, forever. But the point is, it's only available to purchase in those months. This month is about to be over, so purchase it now before um, before it runs out, before the date runs out. But the point is that it's forgiving people essentially. Um, somebody talks bad about you, you forgive them. Somebody insults you, you forgive them. Because women are naturally more forgiving than men are. Men are more vindictive, right? So what I'm trying to tell you is that sometimes that makes you into a pushover. It's, especially if you consider yourself a nice girl. Now, if you consider yourself a bitch and somebody who struggles forgiving, this is not to you. But for the most part, most women, if you sound if you sound more so, if you sound sorry enough, they'll they'll forgive you, which which opens up a space for you to get taken advantage of. So if you're somebody like that, you gotta stop forgiving so easily. You gotta make people work to get back in your good graces. If a guy smacks you, God forbid, and he wants to get back with you, you gotta let him know. All right, I'll, I'll take you back, but do this, punish him. Make him make him write a five-page letter. Make him run the make him run the park in his underwear, right? With a, with a shirt that's with a with, with writing on his chest that says "I'm sorry, baby, forgive me." All that shit, right? Make them pay a price so that the next time they think about doing that shit to you again, they'll realize there are consequences for it because you made them go through it. But the point is, is that forgiving too much is weak. That's just the point. Forgiving too much is weak, and that's just you looking for the validation. Hey, asking dating advice from your female friends. Don't ask dating advice from your female friends, okay? They don't know what the fuck they're talking about. They're trying to tell you what you what you want to hear. No, move on. Second one. Not, I'm not even going to go any further on that one. Um, spending all the time and texting all the time. Create some rhythm. Just because you feel the, the, the need to to text the person because they're responding to you fast, to respond to them fast because they're doing it, doesn't mean you should. A guy needs space. A guy needs to feel like they're losing you. A guy needs to feel like, like, like they, they like, a guy, a guy needs to feel that you're losing a little bit of interest in order to keep them in a sexually competitive state. A guy needs to see that you could potentially lose interest because if you don't show them that they could that you could one day lose interest they'll take you for granted because naturally when you like the guy you try to make you try to be you try to how can i say is you try to make a, a strong effort to let him know that you're net you're never gonna leave him right so anytime you feel like not seeing him you don't say it because you feel bad Fuck that shit, man. Sometimes you don't want to see the guy. Sometimes you don't want to respond fast. Do it. But it might offend them. Who cares if that offends them? Good. That, that means they will get more emotional. That means they'll want to get closer to you. The point is, is that you got to create a rhythm, right? You got to create a rhythm. Sometimes text them fast. Sometimes text them slow. Sometimes go on a date on time. Sometimes be a little late. Sometimes cancel a date. Sometimes you're more consistent. Sometimes you're cold in person and then sometimes you're warm in person. Sometimes you don't want to talk on the phone and sometimes you want to talk on the phone. Give them some variety. A guy don't, it, because if you don't do that, a guy's going to get bored of you. It's just natural. Now, this is not going to make him fall in love with you completely. What this does is it, is it extends the natural life of the relationship. Every relationship has an end. Every relationship has a limit. So let's just say, hypothetically speaking, you do this. What it does is that it allows you to reach its, its natural limit. So if you would have not been, if you would have been consistent all the time, always texting him back, always being there all the time, and let's just say the natural life of this relationship was one year, just my guess, I think it'll cut it short to like six months. Right, but if you do this right, if you if you if you're a little hot and cold from time to time in a healthy way, not too toxic, it, you can naturally live live out the whole life of the relationship without cutting it short because of your neediness. Tenth, being naive. Okay, don't be naive about relationships, and marriage and all that kind of stuff. Relationships is a very selfish game. You can't trust people. That's why you wear condoms. A guy, a guy will tell you he's clean when in reality he, he has something. A guy will tell you he is single when in reality he's married. You know, a woman will do the same thing, right? The point is, is that don't think that everybody is looking out for you. Don't think that everybody is on your side. Don't think, don't, don't assume just because he's smiling at you, saying how beautiful you are, it means he loves you. Don't assume any of that. Don't, assume, don't buy into the, guy, the things that guys tell you. Don't assume because a guy says, you're, you're the one for me after the first date, it means you are the one for him. Don't be so gullible and so naive, right? Unfortunately, when it comes to dating, a lot of the times they're trying to deceive you. They're trying to take advantage of you. And it's not that they're naturally mean. It's not that people do it on purpose. But because natural selection has has rewarded the guys who, who actually deceive the women the most i mean i mean it, it's just the truth if if you hype yourself up you'll get more partners right so natural natural selection 
um, um, encourages that in guys, but also natural selection also um, um, encourages women who are able to read signs of deception. Because if 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 women who who ban guys that are that are that that lie about their status and how much they're able to provide, and they're always getting food. What will happen is that their offspring may not survive. So naturally, the strongest women who are able to 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 read the bullshit, the ones that are weak versus the ones that are strong, because the weak will always try to look strong. Those are the ones that are gonna get the best genes because they're gonna um, they're gonna they're gonna choose the ones that are genuinely strong. You get what I'm trying to say? So those genes will get passed on. The point is, is that being not um, not being naive is is your most important strength when it comes to dating if you believe everything a guy tells you you're gonna end up with a fucking loser and with a and with a bloodline that's that's just full of losers it's just and, and not a happy bloodline to be quite honest with you right so learn to read men learn to read the bullshit i have videos just google how to read men mindful attraction on this on youtube and you'll find those kind of videos okay so stop being naive stop assuming that everyone has good intentions that people all all wanna the people will tell you the truth that's just naive and that's gonna get your ass played this is alex your toxic gaming coach um, if you guys need one-on-one -on -one coaching and want me to coach you one-on-one, -on -one, go to myfortraction.org and I'll work with you. I'll see you guys next time. Stay toxic. All right, so if you're a nice girl, if you're tired of being played, if you're tired of people not respecting you, if you resent that people don't take you seriously, if people just see you as a sex object, if you feel like people are always playing you, I would highly recommend you check out this call, course called Nice Girl. I rarely put out courses. And every one of my courses is a specific purpose. Psychological game of attraction was just for single people. Natural chemistry was for women in relationships. This course is for specific nice girls. Now, most of you guys are nice. Most of you guys have great hearts. Unfortunately, men take advantage of you. So I have this limited time course. Specifically, you guys can only buy it and get access to it July and November. Now, if you purchase it in July or November, you could, you could have access to it all year round, but you could only purchase it July and November. So this month only, you guys can purchase this course. It's only for a limited time, right? So in this course, you're pretty much gonna learn about how to how, how to how to set boundaries, how to project a, a powerful presence, how to create healthy boundaries, um, how to communicate yourself in a in a in an assertive way, how to not let people take advantage of you. Like you're going to learn the art of um, how to identify those who are trying to take advantage of you, how to assert yourself, signs of weakness, signs of strength, and how to communicate signs of strength and how to lower the signs of weakness. All of these things, I can promise you, ladies and gentlemen, look, okay, if you just do what this course says, just doing what this course says is going to improve not only your dating life, but your professional life, your personal life your social life with your friends and family because people will always try to test you people will always see whether or not they can take advantage of you even a fucking child so by purchasing this course you could so you could, you could create an, a, a a healthy immune system there are three types of immune system there is your body's Im immune system there is an emotional immune system that you increase through meditation and then there's a social immune system that is through self-assertion Okay, so this course will help you build that emo that social immune system to talk to push away certain behaviors from your life and certain people, and by default you attract the right people. So check out that course. One is that okay? Look, I'm just gonna be honest with you. It's not gonna make you. It's not gonna fix the problems 100. percent I'm I'm not here to lie to you guys. I'm here to give you realistic expectation. Okay, it's not gonna make you. It's not gonna completely change your life from day to night. But if you do what the videos say. Okay, if you're 20% not if you're if you're at a 20% in terms of assertiveness by finishing this course, you could go through it 40%. Now you guys might say, where are the evidence for it? In my life only. Okay? And through people's experience through applying these methods and through doing research about what actually helps assertiveness. Okay. So I, I thoroughly re researched this um this course. I put a lot of thought into it. It's not complete. Next month, I'm going to add another part, which if you buy it now, you're going to have access to it. Okay. So I'll see you guys inside that course and stay toxic, my friends. Purchase it now or I'm closing the channel. Okay. See you guys inside.